beautiful day in the garden. It is June 7th. Things are looking good. Lots of corn sprouting here. You can see those taller grasses popping up against the other stuff. Uh, plenty of cucurbitas that are sprouting just from being thrown on the ground. Lots of interesting things happening with some animals picking them up as well, picking up the seeds, putting them in different places. Had a buddy, my friend Andrew, came over with a wood chipper. Uh, and now it's interesting to see some uh, cucurbitas popping up in various places. There's a few right there as well. Uh, so stuff is definitely happening. Uh, lots of seeds were saved and those seeds got thrown on the ground here and there. And as you can see, stuff is popping up. There's another one. There's some kale, which may or may not make it, but that's no skin off my back. Things are looking good. Got my Hoogle culture mound there. Some stuff growing off of that. There's a bunch of what you might be seeing is arugula that has gone to seed. That's what these white flowers are here. Let's see what else we got going on. Uh, this is a bunch of uh, sea moshata that I'm going to use as a rootstock. So you can see those there. Um, I'm gonna try and put that on things like cucumbers, as well as some melons and stuff like that. See if I can't get a little bit of improved something or other going on there. This is Tetsukabuto mixed with some uh, Maximus, I think. Main thing I'm uh, gonna be doing now is looking at uh, the comfrey that I've got. A lot of it uh, is basically flowered out and is getting too tall to stand. It did rain a bunch last night, so that's probably what the deal is with that. So um, I'm going to harvest that today and make a JLF out of that. So let's start putting it in the bucket. Here's one bucket full. That's about two and a half plants. There were two there. Here. So we've got a few to go. Might use some simply as a little uh, drop and chop, drop and drop, drop and chop uh, fertilizer slash, slash mulch as well. Anyway, I'll fill this bucket up with water now. Let it sit. So that's two buckets of Comfrey JLF. Uh, I'm going to pour water in those and let them sit for not too long. There's something about the structure of this plant cells that breaks down really quickly. You don't get a lot of extra plant material. It just kind of turns into goo once you put it underwater. So it's pretty quick to be able to use. I'd say four or five days you get something usable. And you can keep using it as long as you'd like. So it gets the job done. It's going to go in one way or the other. So good stuff to use. Here's another, another method I'm giving a shot at. This is just uh, cucurbita seeds that have been soaked for about 24 hours. And the idea here is I've just scythed down a patch to keep sort of the weeds growing kind of low. And there's lettuce, the volunteered kale, etc. There's some corn. Anyway, uh, and the idea is I think just put it down and cover it with a little bit of dirt. So we'll see how that goes. Handful of seeds. Let it go in a line so that it'll be easier to cover up with dirt. You can cover more seed with less dirt. But general, just the kind of general idea. Maybe some down there. Okay. And now I'll cover it up. You do want to use, I mean, I think that if, you know, following my intuition here, I would say this is my first time doing it, but I think these seeds are probably, you know, have soaked up enough water to get to the point where they're 
ready to germinate and the temps are gonna be pretty high. I think we should see some action here pretty soon. Water this in. There's tons of ants in this dirt. Trying to bite me, but it's cool. I am kind of getting into their getting into their space. Okay, I'm gonna get a little more dirt. Okay, so uh, I scythed down a little spot, tried to get everything nice and short, then threw down some pre-soaked cucurbita seeds, and then just put, I don't know, about this much soil on top. Uh, I may water it in. What I'm gonna do now is take this pile of grass that I scythed up, and just kind of sprinkle it over, sprinkle it over our line here. Too much so that there's problems getting out for these guys, these little guys, when they do appear. But you know, enough to keep the soil relatively moist and healthy, covered from the sun and the wind, the elements. Uh, I like to remember that this is the intersection between heaven and earth, you know, and uh, that's pretty pretty special place to be human beings ourselves we seem to be at the intersection of biology and something else as well if you haven't noticed we're living on the earth in a pretty weird way and that's okay anyway uh, we will see how this works. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to go all right. There's a little bit of that over there as well. I'll cover that up with some grass next. And just keep going until I run out of seeds. And so while we've got some bare soil, uh, I'm going to put some carrot seed down. Okay. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Maybe we'll get lucky. Some of these. Mm. It's nice to just be able to throw things on the ground with a sense of gratitude and hope. Some stuff will work, some stuff won't. We are catching the big fish here, you know. So, not too much of a worry. Seed head, throw that down. Let's hit it up over here as well. Uh, yeah, I made the mistake of covering those other mounds up with grass a little early. Uh, I probably should have put some seed down before, but I'll put some seed down after. It'll nook its way in between the grasses that are above it. With a little luck. We should have some carrots growing along with the kirkabits and seed head. Okay, I'm going to go grab some more stuff to put on. MTV Cribs, welcome to my shed. Uh, this is my rig, so to speak. This is kind of what I'm working with. Uh, in terms of seeds and what a seed saving sort of system can look like. Uh, making a big mix here right now. This has about everything you could think of in terms of what might generally grow at this time of year uh, that I want uh, in kind of a normal garden setting. So I'm not doing any corn or sorghum or stuff that grows super tall. I would say that's maybe my one criteria. And uh, yeah, I've just been going through my jars, looking at what might be cool to plant, 
at this time. Uh, and yeah, so now I've got a nice big mix here. All sorts of stuff. Watermelon, Korean melon, you name it. Some tobacco seed in there. Uh, lots of little stuff. That's what goes well, I think, on freshly sort of disturbed soil like that. And uh, yeah, give it a shot, see how it goes. Uh, it might clear a little more space to lay down some of this stuff as well. Boom, boom. Okay, uh, now just a quick tour of what's going on. This is some uh, Moshada. Uh, Tahitian something. This is from uh, Baker's, Baker Creek Seeds. I uh, don't exactly remember the name, but they're certainly popping off. Something new there. I don't know what those are. I guess we'll see what happens there. Got some Moshada or something planted there. I don't exactly remember. I think that's a Maxima. Uh, just it took down a bunch of lettuce uh, and planted okra in there. We'll see if it takes. Hopefully it does. Didn't have such great luck with okra last year, but uh, hopefully it'll be okay this year. Over here we've got some uh, curcubits. Don't exactly remember what it is. I think it's maybe a uh, Lofthouse Winter Peppo, I think is what it is. Anyway, those are doing good. This is, I think, some patty pans right here. Planted about six of them. Here is the uh, fava, fava beans, as you can see. Quite a bit of beans on the lower um, lower parts of the plant there. And this is a Grex, so it's kind of all over the place. Some are doing quite well, some, who knows. Got some barley hanging to dry. That's stuff that was cut down just a few days ago. Uh, here we've got a bunch of uh, daikon that's gone to seed. Did a Grex of daikon as well as Chinese cabbage. So. There should be, hopefully, lots and lots of seeds, as you can see here. The pods are pretty full. Two rows, plenty of plenty of stuff in the pods there. Uh, so yeah, should have lots of good seeds to work with. Plenty to help me get a little luckier with uh, some Chinese cabbage. So that should be cool. Here's another look at the uh, the fava bean grex. Doing pretty good. Uh, there's something here. I'm not sure. This is something that I think just kind of popped up. So we'll see. A little kale there, right? Kale that kind of pops up in random places tends to do quite well. You can see this. These are pretty, pretty clean leaves. Not a lot of bug infestation there. So that is cool. Happy to see that. So uh, yeah, this is going to be. Daikon Grex, and it is looking to be quite vigorous. I will probably cut down. Uh, some of these plants look like they're basically done flowering. There's maybe just a few flowers on there, but you can see what's going to look like nice fat seeds. So that should be great. Looking forward to having lots of daikon seeds. That's one that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I think it'll work pretty well. Here's some uh, horseradish, looking bigger than ever. Let's see, something that popped up. I'm thinking that's a Maxima. Potatoes of various sorts. Uh, some of the potatoes have gone to flower. I'm hoping to get some true potato seed. Some of these are uh, the second year on TPS, true potato seed that uh, I've planted and so I think that I'll get some get some of my own potato seeds this year, which should be cool. Here we've got uh, asparagus. Asparagus has actually done very well this year. Uh, it's the third year we put it in, and I know you're kind of supposed to wait a couple years to start really harvesting off of it. This is the first year that we really started taking stuff off, uh, eating, and it tasted great. Really, really fresh, nice kind of grassy taste to it, and that's doing pretty well. Uh, so yeah, we're letting it fern out, and hopefully we'll have an even bigger, bigger push next time. This is a kind of just miscellaneous area. You can see lots of different food plants, a couple of sweet potato plants in there, 
Here is uh, raspberries. Raspberries are doing quite well. Looks like we're going about to have all sorts of them. And they'll start coming in. I did a little bit of trimming today because there's there's actually two varieties, and uh, there's a red raspberry and a black raspberry. Well, red raspberry tastes way better, I think, but they're both. Got the pile of raspberry canes. There's a turnip that's gone to seed. Planted some onions. Some more patty pans here. One that I planted in a cup and transplanted, and then a bunch of stuff that came up on its own. So we'll see what takes here and what doesn't. Uh, let's see, what else? Strawberries, we had a real good run with earlier. Those seem to be about done, but that's all right. We got pounds and pounds of strawberries. There's one shiso plant. I always get one shiso plant, which is fine by me, because that's basically all I need. Uh, some, uh, Moshada and Tetsu Kabuto, interspecies uh, hybrid. Three of those planted here. Those will just kind of spread out in this lawn area here. So, looking forward to that. Tetsukabuto did really well last year. We had a ton of those. Here are some cucumbers and melons. Yeah, that's what these are. Uh, various sorts. I'm going to try grafting some of these onto Moshada rootstock. Uh, here's blackberries, spineless canes, which is cool. Uh, I gotta string these up. I've got these posts here that I'll use to make sure they can stand up. But uh, looks like we're gonna get in quite a few berries off of those, so that's cool. And then here's my general sort of marginal land area. This is what I was showing earlier with the. Um, planting out of soaked, pre-soaked uh, cucurbita seeds, and um, so uh, hope for good things. There's lots of kale growing here right now, uh, lots of little corn coming up. There's some Lofthouse Buttercup Maxima. Can't tell, but there's two plants. One, it's kind of gumbuck duty. Oh, there's another new one there. So lots of new friends, lots of things popping up here right now. I just harvested a bunch of barley from this area. And there are things like little, uh, let's see, peppos coming up there. Plenty of kale. Not really a great time for kale. Not really something I crave these days uh, in this season, but if it's growing, it's growing. There's the corn, some more kale, some more pepo, 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 pepos. Planted those just by scattering seed around this area here. Some cut down grass. So, uh, yeah, the next phase here is corn, corn, and whatever else will grow in between it. You can sort of see, right? Lots of little corn. There's corn. Yeah. It does grow fast. It kind of pops up above the other stuff. And this is corn that's just been thrown on the ground. So continuing uh, in the spirit of selecting for corn that will grow. Kind of just uh, by throwing it on the ground. We'll see how that plays out. Got some sunflowers there. Jerusalem artichoke. As always, it's doing just fine. Um, this is kind of a little shady area of the of the garden. Not too much going on here. Some figs. Uh, over here, I think you can kind of see some uh, cucumbers coming in. This has been kind of an in, uh, an experiment in seeing what if I can get some cucumbers growing among these other weeds. As you can see, there's a few other 
cucurbitas in there as well, which is fine. I'm trying to just kind of get a generally nice moist soil area. Some are doing better than others, but hey, fight it out. That's okay. Uh, some more stuff over here. More cucumbers, a couple watermelons as well. I'm going to try and probably do a dedicated watermelon section as well as a dedicated melon section. Maybe somewhere over here. Um, those are ones that need quite a bit of water. But I'm selecting towards stuff that will do kind of just a little bit better naturally here. Okay, here's some cucumbers that are planted. These are all just kind of random seeds, saved seeds. I'm not quite sure what varieties they are, but what's doing well is doing fine. And we will see what happens with these. Cucumbers are my favorites. One of my favorite things to have a lot of in the garden. So I hope those go well. Uh, yeah, let's see what else. I'm gonna clean up this area, probably plant, plant some melons here so looking forward to that still some more comfrey to harvest sort of just jazzed up in here lots of mixture lots of different stuff i guess that's about it i've got some uh, tomatoes that i'm going to put in pretty soon some peppers of course uh and just kind of see what happens you know the the garden is giving Things are going well. We've got lots of seeds, lots of uh, attempts that I can make to grow things and have them come out well. Lots of little friends just popping up in various places. Here's a bunch of tomato that volunteered. Matt's wild cherry is a variety that's, I would say, pretty much invasive in this garden. It'll keep coming up. Um, I'm interested in seeing what happens with these with these potatoes. Hopefully we'll get some uh, seed pods and keep on going with uh, potato trials. Seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. That's the name of the game. But yeah, not too worried about weeds, not too worried about water, not too worried about fertility. I haven't done a ton of fertilizing this year yet uh, we'll see what happens maybe these potatoes they look like they could use a little bit um, but I would say in general I'm happy with how things are looking there's still quite a few things that I'm gonna get going this season so stay tuned <laughs>